In this video, we'll talk about Streptococcus agalactiae. Full disclosure, this is a pretty easy one, so this video should be quick. Recall from our previous discussion, if you're going in order, that we've talked about gram-positive cocci, and then we've split cocci into the catalase-negative strep versus the catalase-positive staph. The past few videos, we've been working through catalase-negative strep. Within that strep category, if we zoom in on that branch shown here in the orange fuzzy line, we then further subdivide catalase negative strep depending on the pattern of hemolysis. The last video, if you're going in order, should have been on strep pyogenes, which is bacitracin positive. But if you have a bacitracin negative beta hemolytic catalase negative strep, then we're talking about strep agalactiae. And that's what this video will be on today. Strep agalactiae, as I just kind of alluded to, is a gram positive catalase negative beta hemolytic strep. It's bacitracin resistant, which is very important because that differentiates it from strep pyogenes if the test writer doesn't give you any other information. You might see this shorthand written as group B strep, just like how in strep pyogenes you saw group A strep, and this refers to the Lansfield grouping. So if you see GBS, which is short for group B strep, that's referring to strep agalactiae, and it's the same thing. Strep agalactiae is PYR negative, and something new, which we haven't seen before, is that it's hippurate positive. So I want to be clear that the three things that differentiate strep agalactiae from strep pyogenes, which is where the test rater is going to go because they share so, so many other common features, is agalactiae is bacitracin resistant, PYR negative, and hippurate positive. The other things that I should mention is that strep agalactiae, like strep pyogenes, exist in chains. Where it differs is that it's found in the female genital tract, so it colonizes the vagina. And this will be important for the clinical diseases that it causes, which we'll get to later in this video. And also I'll note that it's a facultative anaerobe. So the big things that you want to keep in mind are bacitracin resistant, PYR negative, and hippurate positive. So my mnemonic to remember this is group B strep, and we focus in on that letter B. B for bacitracin bad or bacitracin resistant. B for Burolidonal bad, and I'm substituting B for the P, of course, just to help complete this mnemonic. And then likewise, for hippurate, I remember hippurate, and that B is again reminding me that it's hippurate or hippurate positive for group B strep or strep agalactiae. And then lastly, we want to remember babies, and this is for the different types of clinical diseases which strep agalactiae causes, which are usually most severe in babies. That baby mnemonic will also cue us in to remember when we need to be testing for strep agalactiae, and I'll get to that in just a few slides. Now here's what it's going to look like if they give you the slide. It's kind of hard to appreciate the major difference between this and strep pyogenes, and to the untrained eye, you're not going to be able to do that. So if you see this image, I would say rest assured that you're going to get other information, other buzzwords, other defining characteristics alongside this slide because really you can't differentiate this from some of the other species that we've already talked about. Let's talk briefly about virulence factors. There's really not a lot here that you need to know. The first one you want to know is that strep agalactiae has a capsule. The second thing, which technically is not even a virulence factor, but it gets listed in this category pretty often, is this thing called camp factor. And this just refers to the name of a test that identifies strep agalactiae. So this allows or enlarges the area of hemolysis for sh uh, actually staph aureus. And CAMP factor has nothing to do with cyclic AMP. So CAMP does not stand for cyclic AMP. It's actually an acronym that uh, describes the names of people involved with testing for this pathogen. It's not a virulence factor, but I'm including it here because you'll see it come up in this section. But this is not really high yield. What is really high yield to know is the clinical syndromes or the diseases that strep agalactiate can cause. And the three that you want to memorize are pneumonia, meningitis, and sepsis, and specifically all in neonates. So this is like neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, etc. Now, pregnant, pregnant mothers should be screened for strep agalactiate at somewhere between 35 and 37 weeks of gestation. And when you screen them for this, what you do is you use a vaginal and a rectal swab. And then if that swab detects the presence of strep agalactiae, you would then treat them with intrapartum penicillin. So a couple really high yield things here for the purposes of exams. One, 35 to 37 weeks is when you test for this. That's very high yield. 
to the treatment for strep agalactiae, and basically the only treatment you need to memorize is if positive, when you do the swab, then treatment equals intrapartum penicillin. Okay, very, very high yield. Now, the way to remember this is that you are going to swab pregnant mothers, SPM, for neonatal sepsis, pneumonia, and meningitis. So pretty easy to memorize using that mnemonic. Remember, you have to memorize 35 to 37 weeks. You have to memorize treatment equals intrapartum penicillin if positive. And this should kind of just make sense to you practically because this pathogen colonizes the vagina. Therefore, if you don't screen mothers for this and if you don't treat them for this when baby's being delivered through the canal, if it rubs up against an area of the vagina that has strep agalactiae and that strep agalactiae gets into the baby, then it can cause pneumonia, meningitis, and sepsis. And that's why we screen for it and that's why we treat for it because you just don't want that to happen during delivery. So that 35 to 37 weeks with intrapartum penicillin should make sense to you. Just remember, swab pregnant mothers, that's a rectal and vaginal swab at 35 to 37 weeks, SPM, sepsis, pneumonia, meningitis. So here's your summary slide. I told you this one was gonna be pretty straightforward. This is a caucus that occurs in chains. Gram positive, catalase negative, beta hemolytic, group B. The important things to differentiate it from strep pyogenes are that it's bacitracin resistant, PYR resistant, and hippurate positive. Just remember the Bs for group B strep, B for bacitracin, B for BYR if we substitute, B for hippurate if we substitute. Virulence factors, really not important, but capsule and camp factor, which again has nothing to do with cyclic AMP. The high yield clinical associations, we swab pregnant mothers, SPM, sepsis, pneumonia, meningitis. And if positive, when you do the rectal and vaginal swab, then treat with intrapartum penicillin. That's it.